Amen. Ben. Thank you. God always has a way for you to go forward. The way is not always clear. And in the search for the way of finding the answers to our questions is a way that God wants us to draw closer to him. And that as we are drawn closer to God, we find ourselves actually on the way that we've been searching for. That's how it works in the life of Scripture. That's what it, how it works in the life of following Christ. You've had questions from the beginning of COVID-19 hitting America hard in March. For almost six months, we've been at the kind of questions of how long will it last, how bad will it get, and we've learned some of those answers along the way. School has started, and courageously, precious children have engaged the learning curve of online and some in person, forming friendships around wearing masks or waving to people on the Zoom. And so it is that parents have been, grandparents have been learning how to do this Zoom thing along with really courageous teachers and a resourceful community and can-do administrators. But your business has been after this. Your business has had to make the adjustments along the way. And in the midst of the questions that you've asked, my prayer for you as a pastor in your life is that they will, your answers, your searching for the answers will draw you closer to the one who created the heavens and the universe and knows you personally that you may relax your anxiety in the midst of his presence and know that his presence will guide you in the direction that you need to go in this day and for tomorrow. We live it one day at a time, and being in the now then is the best way of preparing for tomorrow is. So we don't miss what God is showing us now. Google has asked 40,000 questions a second. <laughs> That's a place to go. As Debbie was guiding us to GPS, and it was a great resource and a good message. It did remind me, though, when I was trying to get to a retreat center in East Texas, I was using GPS. I was turned into a farm following my GPS, and just as I was getting ready to go across an earthen bank dam over a farm lake, I thought, I think something is amiss. So I backed off, turned around, a farmer was outside his barn. He called, waved to me, and I pulled over, glad that he didn't have a shotgun. And I rolled down my window, and he said, you're following GPS, aren't you? Yeah. You're wanting to get to so-and-so. Yep. He said, well, this is how you need to do it. But in the midst of taking our questions to God, as Debbie shared within Scripture and the life of Scripture, we discover that the Bible itself has 3,300 questions. And most of them were questions that were asked by God of people, not because God didn't know the answer. But he wanted to know if we knew the answer. And the way that we discover the answers in the light of faith today and the pattern of Scripture is to draw, let our questions draw us closer and closer to God. We see the uncharted waters of Acts 16, and the uncharted territory of Acts 16 provides a pathway of how we can learn how to trust God into an unknown future, how to be called into what is before us by being faithful to listen to God today. Now, you know what questions are pressing more in you right now. And part of the gift that we can give each other is room to not know, but to find out the answer to what we need to know and help each other to do that. We find that there is a calm curiosity among the people in Acts 16 to try to get into these uncharted waters, and we discover that what they learn is what we can learn about being drawn to God as we figure things out, about seeing people as our mission, and making sure that we make the journey of discovery together as people. These three highlights of truth. One is that we be drawn to God as we figure things out. We don't wait and get all the answers before we become closer to God. They're really a resource that God uses for us to depend more and more on him and how we think and how we feel, how we commit of our time and, and what we do with our resources in light of that. The story is told that Paul, the great Apostle Paul, now on what we call his second missionary journey, he had no idea that it would be called that in his day, 
But because we're looking past tense, we can see like, well, it's all figured out. But it wasn't all figured out for them then. Just like one day this era will pass and we'll look back on it and say, wow, that's, well, we didn't know all of that. Then we had to live our way through it and discover more who, who we are in light of God that then got us to that day in the future we'll be able to look back on today. And that day is coming. Know that he has a great way and a pathway for you forward. So in Acts 16, verses 6 through 8, it highlighted it this way. They were kept by the Holy Spirit from going into a region of Asia. And then as they were wanting to enter another region of Bithynia, the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to go. Twice, God stopped Paul and his companions from saying, don't go in that direction. Now, how did they know that? Well, they knew that in a couple of ways. They knew that by asking the questions to God and not just their own reason. They do that by asking God with their feelings and letting the feelings be part of their conversation with God. They did so in the midst of prayer and in worship it may be that someone stood with a gift of prophecy to say, this is what I think God is telling you to do. Pray about it and see if it is so. But in the not knowing, twice God saying no, they knew that God is a God of yes. They knew that God is an optimist. He's a God that has a future direction. So they knew that God had a way forward for them. Where would it be? And so they went down to Troas. Troas, which was an important seaport town on the east side of the Mediterranean, outside of Asia Minor. And there at that seaport town, they went to sleep. Ah, it's important to sleep during COVID-19. It's important to relax. It's important to take a deep breath. And Paul, in the midst of a dream, received a vision. And in the vision, which he had, it appeared to be a person telling him to come across the Aegean Sea into what was ahead. We're at TriPoint. This remarkable vision of that's been continuing being God's revelation for Trinity Baptist Church in light of San Antonio. There have been many iterations, many adaptations we've made along the way with our TriPoint campus, just like we do in our life. Among the gifts that God gave was a mutual discovery for us of Scott and Rhonda Crocker and Scott and Rhonda Crocker of us. I remember in the this late spring of 2016, I think St uh, uh, the Stan and Susie Merritt are here. Their son was a commercial real estate agent in Austin and was connecting with this a really dynamic couple in Austin who wanted to move to San Antonio and began a Summer Moon franchise. That connected with kind of our search team here because we had closed that cafe for a year, really praying and searching for the right partner that would have a business plan connected to the understanding of what this space is about, which is connecting people to the hope of God in their life. And in the midst of that, search and search mutually brought us together. I remember when they first walked through the door, uh, Scott and Rhonda, and they're here this morning. And we sat down together just to get to know each other, to explain what God was doing in the life of San Antonio and through Trinity Baptist Church and through this campus, and to hear their story of Scott, a litigator, uh, an attorney who's comfortable in the courtroom, and Rhonda, who is a woman of science who helped people in acute situations in the hospital. But in their marriage, they were curious that they had something, God had something else for them to do and another place for them to be. The parents of two daughters, that was to bring them to San Antonio, that began then franchising Summer Moon here, that now has opened up in two other places, and that this location has been a community building opportunity, not only for, for them and for us and for our mutual mission together. And even when the cafe had to close down to in-person seating, because we had envisioned a drive-through, then their business has been thriving with their ability to do the drive-through effectively. All the while asking the business plan question in searching for God's leadership. It's not just the business plan, but the business plan is part of honoring God. The plans that we seek to make to honor him, but doing so in light of a larger purpose of what God is unfolding in their life. 
many of us, our pastoral staff, our trustees, many deacons and other church leaders in our church, and our emerging adults and college students are, are stepped into this challenge for us to help ask the right questions to find God's answers by reading a common book called Canoeing the Mountains by Todd Bolsinger. For me, the central quote within this pivotal work is energizing a community of people toward their own transformation in order to accomplish a shared mission in a changing world. It's a power-packed sentence. It describes what each of us are on. We're, we're called to have our lives transformed in light of God's love through Christ Jesus and the ongoing work of our lives being his laboratory in our world. But to do so in a cause that's bigger than us, our, our shared mission, our shared mission in the life of Trinity of helping seekers to become believers and believers to become disciples. And then that as we do this common mission, we realize we're in a vastly changing world. We've highlighted among ourselves and what we know that's happening in a larger context and that the crisis of COVID-19 has advanced our connection to technology by at least five years and other adaptations we've had to make. God's not left out of that equation. He is in the midst of the equation. And in order for us to accomplish God's mission, we ourselves are changed because we're in service of him and make sure that your life, even in the midst of anxiety of not knowing, is in service for other people in light of God. And then God will bring that right update for you. But then your update, your change, will be the right update that you need to be for your family and for your friends and for your business and the life of your school and the life of our shared mission as a church. One helps in the transformation for the other. So, be drawn to God in search of your answers for his updates in your life. Two is to see your mission. To see your mission as a people whom God loves. That is, whether you are servicing people at a counter, taking orders, know that it is about taking orders, making sure that we get it right, but it's about the people. It's always about the people. In business circles, that's called, it's always about the customer. But in light of the faith of understanding that everyone is made in God's image, a customer is seen by Christians as a person that is to be treated with a dignity and an honor and a respect and a love on our part that Christ makes that possible for us to see your mission as people whom God loves. So when Paul and his companions found their way in Troas, not knowing where the answer would be, except God gave a vision in the middle of the night to Paul. And what was that vision? But it was in the form of a person. And the person was in the land across the Aegean Sea in the old territory of Greece called Macedonia. And there a Macedonian was calling out, asking for Paul to come and give help. Not surprising, it took the place of a person. Now, in doing so, what we discover is that as they immediately then went, got in their boat, went all across to the other shore, got out of uh, Neapolis, went to Samothrace, and they went to Philippi, the Macedonian that Paul saw in his vision during a dream that was a man, but the first Macedonian that would come to faith in Christ in the new land was a woman by the name of Lydia. And Lydia was an international business person that had come from Thyatira, an area that Paul had been before, not far from where uh, Timothy, one of the companions of Paul, had come from. She was a businesswoman. Paul would naturally have gone to Philippi and gone to a place of worship called a synagogue and to be able to share that Jesus is the Messiah, the fulfillment of all the scripture. But there wasn't a synagogue in Philippi, so he went by the river, and the reason went to the river, that would be a gathering place of prayer in the midst of nature. And it's also where she would do her work as an international trader in purple dye. And Lydia had a heart desiring to know God. Her heart desired to know that there was something more in life than what she currently had. Drew her to, in a curiosity to hear Paul, just as God will call people to be curious to hear you, to watch your life, and to see what God is showing them through you. 
She came to faith in Christ and all of her household with her. And in the midst of that, then another person would be a, a young girl who had become involved in the slave trade. She had a unique gift of being able to be stirred by a spirit inside of her to prophesy to the future, but that, that gift that she had had been aligned to the evil one and being used by people with evil purposes. But she could see in Paul and Silas, these two sidekicks of the gospel, that they were proclaiming a gift of salvation, and she announced to the people in the marketplace in Philippi, Paul turned and saw the hunger of her life, healed her from the evil spirit. She was made whole, and she was also released from the captivity of her oppressors. You think God would reward them easily, wouldn't you? <laughs> Except what happened is that they would be falsely accused, they'd be thrown into jail, they would, Paul would be hit with a rod unmercifully, almost to the point of death. And once in jail, the jailer had them shackled up into an inner room. What would they do? But they would sing hymns at midnight. Now, what do you do? <laughs> in the midst of COVID-19, feeling kind of locked in in the midst of circumstances in which we are. There's a sense about reaching ourselves out and praising that takes our downcast feelings into the bigness of God, and then God stretches us into his loving presence that gives us an ease. And so they sang. And as a miracle occurred and they were being set free, the jailer, Ask them the question, seeing the difference in their life, what must I do to be saved? Three people in the Macedonian call, a businesswoman, a slave girl set free, a jailer no longer jailed in his own imprisonment. God gives you a vision for people. That in the midst of this time, there's a hunger for people to step into, discover who they are in light of God. You're the means to bring that about. A while back when some of us were there in Philippi, this land of Greece, we were able to see the scene by which it came together. And to be able to see the, the, the river where Lydia and her family and friends were baptized for the slave girl, now free, a freed woman was baptized. And in that river when the jailer and his family were baptized, still running today. There was no sign of the cross when Paul first went there. But because a strong church was established in Philippi, the old remnants of that city have the signs of the cross that are there. One day when we leave this world... Much of it will still be the same that's here. The San Antonio River will still be flowing. What would be the sign that you had walked this space in the lives of people? What would be the legacy of how you responded, being drawn closer to God in the service of him in the midst of this COVID-19 time? That's what God has for you. We received the hard news yesterday that a a young leading actor, Chadwick Boseman, died. What most of us didn't know is that for four years, he had been diagnosed with colon cancer. In 2016, he was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer third stage. He died a few days ago when it hit its fourth stage. We didn't know that uh, before when he was into some of the great movies of Jackie Robinson, the movie number 42, or playing third grade Marshall, that or when he was playing the James Brown about getting up, that this was someone that was on a journey of his own death and life. And as he went through his treatments, and as he then became a global star in the midst of a Marvel comic movie where he was the son of a king who learned how to become a king, he was headed towards his own death on earth. Oh, what made him, what enabled him to do this? Among that was at the source of his life. When he was a boy growing up in Anderson, South Carolina, he was a part of the youth group. He sang in the youth choir. He was baptized by his faith in Christ Jesus. All of this was part of that inner strength that enabled him to produce in his life in the midst of having the life-threatening disease of colon cancer. So we can't put off living. We live in the midst of the challenges that we have. 
even as the characters that he played on the screen, so it is that in his own life he was enacting this faith of the gospel made possible through Christ. So be drawn to God in your search for the answers. See people as the mission of your life and whatever your work is. And third, uh, go with the people that are drawn to the mission. You want to be connecting and hooking up with all kinds of people in our world, and there are all kinds of people, aren't there? But the people that you want to be drawn into your purpose of life are the people that are on the mission headed in the same direction. And in verse 10 it's of chapter 16, it can look like a throwaway verse, except in this verse is a powerful descriptor. Luke, who wrote the, the gospel that bears his name, who wrote the book of Acts like his companion volume, says after Paul had seen the vision at Troas, we, meaning he's part of it, he hooked up with them. He was a physician in the Gentile world, either there in Troas or a ship doctor. Somehow he had come to this faith in Christ and he wanted to be on a mission and so he hooked up with him. And Paul and, and Silas and Timothy together, young and old, made their journey. Now, Paul had had the vision that, and they affirmed it. The wisdom of God bubbled up and said, yeah, this is the direction that we're supposed to go in which they themselves would be part of sharing this promise of Christ. That's what Nolan Wu was saying to us, that he had come from Houston to San Antonio knowing that he would be majoring in his future career knowing that he wanted to have friendship, knowing that he wanted to be drawn closer to Christ. And what resource would God bring together for Nolan but the people of Trinity Baptist Church? And in the midst of that, of an emerging ministry with our college students and adults, and grateful for Sarah and for CMAC and, well, all of you, all of us, in doing this together. It was a hunger in Nolan's life. But if we hadn't been here doing this call of God the best we can understand it, knowing that we don't have all the answers, but that we have enough of the answer about who God is for the times in which we live, that a gifted college student can say, that community is where I want to be. What an exciting time to live. What an exciting time to be drawn closer to God to see what he will show us. What an exciting time to trust God with our questions. Whether you're on live stream or Facebook Live or we're together in person, and what a beautiful sight that you are. It's the same God who comes to each of us with that same question, to be drawn closer to him. For some, that is to say, this is the day like Lydia, like the freed youth who had been a slave woman, like the jailer, to say, I trust my life to Christ to do so. Maybe you're on a journey of discovering about a pivot and adjustment in your business world, or the flexibility required in your family life and finances. Know that you're among a people that you can ask those questions with and find God's answers together as we serve and let the Lord speak to us. That's called membership. Aaron Gonzalez is on the guitar back there. Aaron, wave to us. Aaron is joining Trinity today, had been a worship leader with us for six years, had been a part of this kind of growing community of what we're doing in scripture and worship and mission. We decided that he's ready for that next step, that he says that, the, this, that God has called him to be in a relationship here. And maybe that this is a time for you just to pray where you are, updating your life with him. We're gonna sing. And as we go, let that be a prayer. I'll put my mask back on. If you'd like to come forward, I'll be here uh, to pray with you, to be, and to also receive your decision. Let's stand together.